Uh, good afternoon. Uh, yes, I'm Tim Jones from Christchurch Art Gallery, and I had the pleasure of spending six months in Bougainville in Papua New Guinea this year. So yay to Christchurch City, Libra uh, Christchurch City Council for letting me go, yay to VSA for uh, sorting it all out. Uh, six months and seven minutes to talk about it, so we'll whistle through this uh, without further ado. Um, that is a, a map of where Bougainville is, so that you can uh, imagine where it is. Uh, it is the most extraordinarily beautiful place. It has fantastic scenery, fantastic uh, beaches, fantastic uh, people. It has uh, active volcanoes which bubble away like that. That's Mount Bangana. Um, it has the most amazing, uh, amazingly rich cultural life, particularly song and dance and poetry and music and musical instruments uh, and stories and um, uh, oral histories. My project there was to gather oral histories. I'm, I'm not really talking about that now, but uh, that's why I was there, to set up a system for them to record their uh, oral histories, uh, which they were hitherto rather failing to do, and they were under threat from the the dominance of English and all the usual things. Um, that is the town of Arawa, which is a sort of Australian mining town built in the 1960s and 70s, uh, not terribly pretty, and made even less pretty by the fact that for 10 years they had a civil war there, and so half the buildings in Arawa uh, look like that still, because there's no money and uh, uh, various sort of political uh, problems that surround the uh, country. So, tough place. Um, the power supply was extremely intermittent. There were lots of power cuts. All the uh, um, uh, electricity was, came from diesel generators, and uh, half the time they weren't working or they ran out of diesel, so the power was very intermittent. There was really only one um, uh, internet provider, and that was Digicel. I don't remember any customer of Digicel ever smiling as happily <laughs> as... Uh, I don't think any customer of Digicel ever smiled at all, but uh, he looks pretty happy, um, but uh, uh, I wasn't. Um, Digicel uh, run, run the show. Uh, you know, they're based in Jamaica, and they make a habit of, of offering their services in developing countries, and their headquarters is actually in Ireland for tax purposes, so they're, they're you know, you smell a rat. Uh, they offer these, they offer these uh, extraordinarily uh, expensive and small data packages. Uh, there's one, and so you can get right down to a 250 megabyte package, and if you do the maths, that is unbelievably expensive, you, even by our standards. Uh, by local standards, it's just um, uh, unimaginable. Having said that, cell phone use is uh, pretty um, widespread. Those were kids at the local high school photographing a fashion show, but um, they did have cell phones. They didn't really uh, know about uh, uh, the internet. They um, uh, didn't know what Wi-Fi was. The little database that I set up was made available to them on their phones using Wi-Fi, but they never used Wi-Fi. Nobody knew what Wi-Fi was. Um, uh, there is a bit of a, a web presence. That's the government's... Uh, uh, internet page, but talk about an echo chamber. There's a small elite of government people talking to each other, writing web pages for other government people to look at and precious few other people. Some of the things that annoyed me were things like even to get help on Word, you have to go online. It's so annoying. Uh, even to uh, register your high score of playing solitaire, you have to... <laughs> You have to go online. Why do you have to go online to do that? It's just nuts. Um, free Basics is another whole seven minutes all, in, all to itself. Free Basics is Facebook's. Yeah, you can have a little bit of internet for nothing. Oh, and the one thing you can have, of course, is Facebook, uh, plus a few other bits and pieces, and they're free. It's supposed to be an on-ramp to the real internet, but in practice it isn't because the real internet isn't affordable. So you are stuck with what Facebook uh, dishes out to you. A terrible poverty of information is the uh, consequence. The only place you can get information is at the market. It means that the public library, which looks very pretty, doesn't have any computers in it and doesn't have any internet access. It means that if you want money out of the bank, you have to queue for hours and hours and hours to make that happen. Tourism and other businesses are absolutely stunted. There is a tourist company, and there they are. But how do you make a booking? How do you email them? How do you phone them up? How do you uh, arrange anything? Uh, it will be ages before they get back to you. 
Um, so uh, that's the situation. I then thought, what are the consequences? What's the take-home message for New Zealand? And I originally thought that, oh, I know what. It means you must keep your pages very lean and you must have great alt text and you must have uh, pages that work on really slow connections. And then I thought, no, this is absolute nonsense. It's not like this at all. And I turned my mind back to 2004, uh, if you remember that document there, um, which uh, uh, recorded the uh, important things uh, that the, um, uh, our then digital strategy needed were um, content, confidence, and connection. And connection is just, you, you cannot imagine how uh, disempowering and how uh, poorly informed you are if the connection is non-existent or uh, outside your um, budget. Uh, so, um, uh, in developed countries, oh, it's very hard to see these children having a healthy, informed, prosperous future if they live lives starved of information. In developed countries, we fret about too much information, just as we perhaps fret about eating too much food. But if you think too much of either is a problem, just wait until you have too little. Thank you very much. <laughs>